Well, the first thing we must recognize really are the achievements that have been there materialized since the Good Friday Agreement and really the measurable changes on the ground. And in parallel we see a number of residual elements of, of violence that continue to affect daily life and whose humanitarian consequences are a matter of concern to the ICRC. I think here of the impact of punishment beatings, but also the protests in places of detention, uh, unresolved uh, cases of uh, disappearance and missing persons. So these are things that have triggered a renewed interest and focus on the part of the ICRC, particularly in engaging with individuals and groups, including marginalized groups, on the consequences in humanitarian terms of some of these issues. We are supportive of a number of uh, grassroots and community organizations that engage uh, on issues of uh, the attempt to mitigate uh, violence, such as in the case of punishment beatings, and we're supportive of some of these initiatives. We're also supportive of efforts that are underway to try and resolve some of the pending cases of missing persons. And we also have an agreement with the Ministry of Justice on the ICRC providing insights, observations and findings and recommendations on the situation inside places of detention. These are not the traditional types of visits that the ICRC is known for internationally, but it's a way of collecting elements from a variety of individuals and groups that are related to prison regimes in order to formulate recommendations and observations that can be helpful in addressing some of the more problematic aspects of it. And finally, we are of course also supportive of the work of the British Red Cross in terms of youth and education, but also of their wider role in Northern Ireland. In this phase of our engagement in Northern Ireland, we're in an early stage, but certainly what is clear is that the ICRC is imperative in humanitarian terms. The way in which we approach a situation, the neutrality, the independence of it, the fact that we can engage across a wide spectrum of individuals and groups to try and provide solutions that would address some of the humanitarian concerns in a context, those are very, very similar from one context to another, and that's the driving force behind our presence. I'm absolutely convinced that the ICRC is an organization that learns from practice. So we are confronted with very different realities in different parts of the world that we operate, and Northern Ireland will help also in that sense to provide again new insights, for example, into how we address the issue of missing persons or unresolved cases of missing persons, how we address certain issues of long-term consequences of a very polarized situation that may have occurred in the 70s, 80s, and that we see now having ongoing impact in, in certain forms, and that we can help address some of these issues on one hand, but also draw lessons for ourselves is absolutely something that will take place also here.